Hey everybody, it's Dave Bugdale, learningvideo.com. You ever do any sort of grading in Resolve, create a LUT, and then go into Premiere Pro to use that LUT? Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And I've done some research and I thought I'd share my findings on when it works and when it doesn't work. So, so maybe something to pay attention to if you're doing this type of um, workflow. So what I've got here, this very first one, I'm shooting a chart, and as you can see, here's the resulting waveform. Um, and what I did, let me bring up the uh, vector scope, is I've got this turned to 2x zoom so we can see it better. I basically lined up all of the colors to their vectors. This is before and this is after I've graded it. So all I'm doing here is the hue versus hue, hue versus sat, and that's basically it. Um, and a little bit of white balance. All these things should be able to carry over through a lot just fine. And as we're going to see, it actually does work just fine. So what I did here is, before I started grading it, I just want to show you on the Canon cameras, uh, this is the can shot with the Canon 5D Mark IV, you have to change the clip or data levels from auto to full. And I have to do that on all of the full HD versions. The 4K versions, you can just leave it in auto. If you don't, here I'll show you what happens when you don't. If you go to color and I go to waveform, you'll notice that the, the whites are above 100 IRE and the blacks are crushed well below zero. So you have to go to clip attributes and set the data levels to full on the full HD versions of the Canon 5D Mark IV and pretty much everything before it, all the way back to like the T2i days. This was shot with the 5D Mark IV All I MOV Full HD. What I did is I created the LUT, went into Premiere Pro, applied the LUT, exported the frame, because these scopes over here are hard to see and match up exactly what's going on. So I thought it'd be a lot easier visually just to bring in the screen capture back into Resolve. So let's go ahead and turn on the Premiere Pro version. And as you can see, the whites, the grays, the blacks match up perfectly. And on the vector scope, they all match up perfectly. See, I can turn this on and off the Premiere Pro version. Match is great, perfect, life is good. Remember, this is the MOV. Next up is the same exact thing from the Canon 5D Mark IV, but this is not the MOV, this is the MP4 version. And as you can see, we've got definitely some color shifts and a little bit of saturation shifts too with the magenta. But this will be noticeable, just going from that to about right there, and the red are going from there to there, and yellow going from there to there, you'll see a difference in the skin tones it'll be noticeable. So if you created a LUT, worked your butt off in uh, Resolve, and then brought it into Premiere Pro, you'll be looking at the skin tones thinking, uh, yeah, that doesn't look right. What's wrong with this? And that's why. So if you're gonna be doing that kind of workflow, use MOV, don't use MP4. So moving on. This is shot with the 5D Mark IV Motion JPEG 4K. Here is where I started. And this is the Premiere Pro um, version of the LUT. And as you can see, again, same things going on. Magenta is going up. Um, we've got a, the reds are, you know, going to the right and the yellows are going to the left and your skin tones are going to look off, unfortunately. And this one, just to reiterate, is, since it was done in 4K, is not um, set to full. The levels were set to auto. Next up is the A7R2, and if we turn these on and off, we can see they match up perfectly. So this A7R2 was shot in standard picture style mode with the contrast turned down to a negative three. And we look at the levels really quickly. You got the brights, the midtones, and the shadows look great in terms of level. They both match perfectly. So moving on. Now we go to what I did here on this one, this final one, is I, this was shot in S-Log. And then what I did is I took the standard with the negative three version and I matched it up. And you can see this resulting curve I have right here. And when I turn the node on, you can see, and I'm gonna actually turn the Premiere Pro version off. You can see basically what I did is I matched up the contrast levels on S-Log in Resolve, created a LUT, 
went into Premiere Pro, applied LUT, and then what you see here is the difference. And as you can see, we've got a saturation change and somewhat of a U change. You can see that the resulting uh, one that being brought in, you can see that the saturation is basically lower in some of those shifts. Then when we go to the waveform, you can see a massive difference. This is what's why probably the saturation is down, is because the levels have changed. You know, where whites were around 99, now they're around, I don't know, 90. Um, Midtones have changed level, and even that the, the black point has come up a bit too. So I guess my first question is, why does not, why does S-Log, when you do a grade in S-Log, create your nice add contrast and saturation to your S-Log 2 footage, you bring it into Premiere Pro, you apply the LUT, but it doesn't look the same. But when you did a Rec 709 version of that, I, this one was standard, it looks perfect. Anybody know? Um, I, I've played around with data levels um, uh, in, in Premiere Pro, or sorry, in Resolve. And one last question, is there a way to go under, you know, properties or clip attributes for the uh, clips within Premiere Pro and change their data levels like we do in Resolve? Is there something I'm missing here? All right, that's pretty much it. Talk to you guys later. Bye.